So most people know what the house of their dreams will look like from the kitchen with the oversized island to the huge master bedroom. Did I mention the walk-in closet? But what if I told you that you can actually write off the house of your dreams or the house you live in today? That's right, the tax code allows you to write off expenses associated with owning a home, which puts money back in your pocket in the form of tax savings just for owning a home. And today we're deep diving into writing off your dream house, something that I've done on multiple homes since 2017 and will get to do again on my very own dream house that is scheduled to finish construction in 2023. Look, I want to save you the headache of deciphering the task code. So watch until the end of the video. Let's dive in. Okay, first let's start with the basics. What is the home tax write-off? also known as a deduction. Tax write-offs reduce your taxable income, and by finding and claiming them, you lower the amount of taxes that you owe, potentially saving you hundreds or even thousands of dollars each year. For example, let's say your adjusted gross income is $100,000, and with the help of this video, you are able to claim $20,000 worth of dream home write-offs for the year. The tax deduction will reduce your adjustable gross income by exactly $20,000. And as a result, you pay taxes on only $80,000 of income instead of $100,000. And that's why I love tax write-offs, especially write-offs related to real estate, because these are deductions for expenses that I would pay anyway. Okay, now that we got the basics covered, let's dive into what types of things you can write off when it comes to owning a home, especially your dream house. First on the list, mortgage interest. The mortgage interest deduction is one of the biggest tax benefits of owning a home, especially your dream home, and here's why. When you buy a home using a loan, you typically pay interest on that loan, and interest on loans used to buy, develop, or improve your house is eligible for the deduction. Now, here's something to keep in mind. The mortgage interest deduction is limited to only two homes. So a combination of your primary residence, a secondary residence, a boat, a vacation house, whatever it is, only two will do. So if you happen to be Drake or Oprah and have more than two homes, you'll want to take the mortgage interest deduction on the two properties that have the highest interest payments, which would give you the biggest deduction. Look, I wish the deduction was unlimited, but there is a ceiling. So for mortgages put in place on or before December 15th, 2017, $1 million is the debt limit for the deduction or $375,000 if you're married and filing separately. But for mortgages put in place after December 15th, 2017, $750,000 is the debt limit or $500,000 if married filing separately. So go ahead and grab form 1098 to find out how much interest you pay on your mortgage each year. Your mortgage servicer is required to send that to you each and every year. All right, next we have discount points. Discount points, also known as loan origination fees, are additional expenses you pay to your lender to lower the interest on your mortgage. And just as an FYI, one discount point is equal to 1% of your loan amount. So if you paid points on your primary mortgage, you may be eligible to fully deduct the points in the year you pay them. Now, what you are allowed to deduct differs from mortgage points related to refinancing your mortgage or buying a second home. So if you paid points to refinance your mortgage or buy a second property, you can't deduct 100% of your discount points in one year. You'll have to deduct them over the term of the loan. As a quick example of this, if you paid points to refinance a 30-year mortgage, each year you would deduct 1 30th of the total points. All right, next on the list, private mortgage insurance. Private mortgage insurance, also called PMI, is a deduction that was actually scheduled to expire in 2017, but was revived in 2019 thanks to the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021. So as of now, you can still take this deduction for the 2021 tax year. But what is private mortgage insurance, also known as PMI? Well, if you put less than 20% down to purchase a home or refinance with less than 20% in equity, 
lenders will typically require you to pay monthly private mortgage insurance in addition to your regular mortgage payments. Luckily, this extra payment is deductible, but there are some conditions. If you are married filing jointly and make $100,000 or more in adjusted gross income, the deduction begins to phase out. And after $109,000 in adjusted gross income, that deduction disappears completely. Then we have property taxes. Unfortunately, there aren't any states in the US where property taxes don't exist. But to help ease the pain, the IRS does allow you to deduct your property taxes. And this is true for all homes you may own and applies to both local and state taxes. This is one of the deductions that was unlimited in the past, but is now capped at $10,000 if you are single or married filing jointly and drops to $5,000 if you're married filing separately. To claim this deduction, you will have to itemize. Next on the list is the home office deduction. Look, if you own a business and operate that business out of your home, you may qualify for the home office deduction. And this deduction is extremely popular because it allows you to deduct expenses related to the business use of your home. We're talking utilities like your internet and electricity, HOA fees, homeowners insurance or renters insurance, repairs, and even depreciation. So to claim the deduction, you have two options, the regular method or the simplified method. Now, the regular method requires you to calculate the percentage of your home that you use for business. For example, if your home is 2,000 square feet and you use 400 square feet for your office, you can write off 20% of your home expenses. Now, with the simplified method, you can take a standard deduction of $5 per square foot of office up to 300 square feet. If you want to skip the calculations altogether, the simplified method will be easier for you. Next, we have home sales. For most people, when they can sell their primary home for a capital gain, they will be able to do so completely tax-free. And that's thanks to the Taxpayer Relief Act of 1997. A net gain or profit on the sale of your home up to $500,000 is 100% tax-free. But there are some requirements. Here's how to qualify. First, you owned your home for at least two of the last five years. Next, you lived in the home at least two of the last five years, and you didn't use this exclusion in the last two years. But suppose you don't meet the requirements but had to sell because of work relocation, divorce, health problems, or other unforeseen circumstances. In that case, you may still be able to eliminate a portion of your profits. And this is one of those things you don't need to itemize to take the exclusion. All right, I'm gonna place a few videos on the screen I think you should watch next. If this video helped you today at all, hit that like button for me. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos that can help you save on taxes or increase your wealth. I'm Karan from Life Accounting and I'll see you in the next video.